Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Tech Forum session. I'm Shilpa Riker, Brand Content Strategist at Blink Advertising. Welcome to our panel, What Make Book Talkers Tick? Everything publishers need to know. Before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the Indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. An acknowledgement that is deeply personal due to this virtual platform and the wide range of locations people are joining from today. I am broadcasting from the traditional territories of the original nations of the land, the Mississaugas of the First Credit of First Nation, the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendek Indigenous peoples. I encourage you to visit nativeland.ca website to learn more about the peoples whose land you're joining from today. BookNet Canada endorses the call to actions from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada and supports an ongoing shift from gatekeeping to space making in the book industry. In spirit of that acknowledgement, I confirm our responsibility in mending the sacred hoop with Canada's Indigenous people to be an ally to all Black, Indigenous and people of colour and to unite and work alongside one another. Now to some technical stuff. If you are having difficulties with Zoom or any other tech related questions, please direct your questions to tech support in the chat. You can find this option using the drop down menu above the chat box, uh, chat text box, or you can email techforum at booknetcanada.ca. We are providing live ASL and closed captioning for this presentation. To see the captions, please find the live transcript button in the Zoom menu at the bottom of your screen, click on it and choose show subtitle. If during the presentation you have any questions for us, please use the Q&A panel found in the bottom menu. Lastly, we would like to remind attendees of the code of conduct, the do's and don'ts. Please do be kind, be inclusive, be respectful of others, including of their privacy, be aware of your words and actions, and please report any violations to tech forum at booknetcanada.ca. Do not harass speakers, hosts, or attendees, or record these sessions. We have a zero tolerance policy. You can find the entire code of conduct at techforum.booknetcanada.ca forward slash code of conduct. Now, I'm very excited to introduce our panelists. We have not one, not two, but five incredible book talkers with us today, starting off with Kimberly Clare. She is a small town bookworm who never grew out of her reading phase. Danielle Bernadin, she creates book reviews and recommendation videos on TikTok, as well as co-hosts Books on the Brain, a bookish podcast. When she isn't trying to reach her yearly reading goal, you can find Danielle click cuddling with the cats and attending full-time university. Arundhati is a 20-year-old college student studying history and biology. She is a longtime book aficionado, a Penguin team partner, and is part of Book Talk event team. Azanta Thakur is a bookstagrammer and a book talker. She is also the founder and president of Book Talk, a nonprofit aimed at connecting readers and authors through bookish events and the annual Book Talk event. Her favorite genres are YA fantasy and adult romance. Lou Aburawi is a Muslim Canadian book talker who reads romance. Welcome everyone. Let's see if we have them all on screen. Hope everyone's doing well today. Hello, how are you? Hi. Hello. Hello, Danielle, Kimberly, Arundhati, Lou, and Asanta. Hello. Great to have you with us. We're so excited and everyone has so much to learn from you guys. Um, let's start from right from the beginning. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, I'll, 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 maybe I'll call you out since there's five of you and then uh, you can each sort of like tell me how you began your creative journey. You know, where did this all begin? And uh, what was the inspiration, I guess, behind it? So, um, Danielle, do you want to uh, start off, perhaps? Sure. Um, I think my book talk, 
journey started very similar to a lot of people at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020 when the world kind of stopped for a little bit and all of a sudden there was a little bit more time for things that I felt passionate about. Um, so I was on TikTok one day and I found uh, a video specifically Kate's books, who's like a big <laughs> uh, user on the platform. I found one of her videos and it kind of launched me back into my love of reading. I'd been a reader growing up, but uh, kind of stopped when university and stuff picked up. So it was a nice uh, reuniting of things when I had time. So yeah. I feel that happens to everybody. When you go to university, there's, there's, I have the same thing. There was a period of time where I just could not read anything at all. Um, mm -hmm. That's cool to hear. That's cool to hear. Um, should we go to Kimberly, perhaps? Or Yeah, so um, my experience was very similar to Danielle's. Um, I was a big reader growing up. Um, I loved to read, but as um, I grew older, I kind of grew out of reading because there were other responsibilities that I had. But with Book Talk, what I really enjoyed about it was it kind of rekindled my love for reading and I was able to kind of go back into um, reading a lot of different books. So that's kind of why I joined Book Talk in the first place. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, Arundhati. Yeah, so for me, I think I actually might have joined Book Talk a little bit later than some of my peers here. Um, I sort of started it out in the build up to the Shadow and Bone TV show. Um, that's kind of what got me back into reading. And I just was seeing all these TikToks on my For You page. And I realized I had so many thoughts and opinions that I really wanted to share. And I just wanted to create a space for myself to share my opinions with everyone. OK, thanks. Uh, what about you, Lou? Um, my story is pretty much similar to everyone else. I got bored during the pandemic and um, <laughs> at first it was just like recommendation videos and then I started to show on screen and then when I noticed that people um, liked what I had to say, I started to sort of make a schedule. But reading is such a solitary activity that I was shocked to find that there's a whole community of like book talkers talking about books and reviewing books. And so I said, why not? Wow, well, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, and uh, Azanta? Yeah, I actually started off on Bookstagram first, um, on Book Instagram, and I joined TikTok January of last year. So my account is just over a year old now because um, not to be creepy, but I wanted to be friends with book talkers specifically Lou actually I have my own personal TikTok that I had her videos saved on my uh, personal account and when I created my account like she was one of the first people I followed um it's because I wanted mutuals and um friends to talk to the community and here we are <laughs> oh Lou do you want to say anything uh <laughs> yeah it's funny how we all uh fangirl over each other like, I remember I felt the same way when Azanta asked me to be on um, Book Talk event, which is the virtual event that we plan every year. Um, I remember saying that it was just an excuse to be friends with Azanta. So that's why I said yes. And so we just have like this mutual girl crush and I love her and, I'm, and I love everyone here. But I think it just goes to show how much this community is. Um, we're just a bunch of nerds who like to read and hang out with each other. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I think that's the thing about I, I found and just in book publishing in general and book books in general it just connects us and uh, there really is this lovely sense of camaraderie um, between book people that you really don't find I've worked in other industries and stuff and you really don't find this kind of warmth and uh, belonging and acceptance and uh, you know except in the book this book world and it doesn't matter what type of um, you know books you read whatever genre you read it's it's just there's, there's such a big support um i'm quite uh, surprised actually how i mean you guys have does, it seems like you didn't start that long ago and you've really amassed quite a following um amongst your uh, your followers i guess um and that's quite incredible so i i mean i'd love to i mean i'd love to hear you must i mean you probably you work with a lot of publishers how do you collaborate collaborate with publishers um, for example, um, you know, let's start with Azanta perhaps since you were. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I tend to 
reach out to publishers first for books that um, I'm really interested in reading. Um, and sometimes um, they'll reach out to me for, for opportunities. I, I, I try to keep um, my content like along. So I'm always, I'm Muslim obviously. And so I, I like to promote Muslim books, South Asian books because I'm also South Asian. Um, and a lot of that, a lot of my content is revolved around my identity um, naturally. So um, I'm always looking for opportunities that will help kind of, um, and the people who follow me al are also among the same identities and they, um, something about that just like connects with them so the opportunities that i i go for are the ones that will kind of i think my my audience and my the people that follow me would enjoy um and so that's that's how i like to collaborate but i will always only recommend books that i really love okay that's good to know um what about let's uh, move, shake it up a bit and move to kim maybe kimberly you want to talk a bit about that how you collaborate with publishers um, I collaborate with publishers by being a beta reader sometimes. So I signed up for a couple of websites which actually provide ARCs in exchange for reviews before the book is actually published. And I think that gives you an opportunity to not only read books that are really, that haven't been published yet. So you get that advantage and there's that benefit, but they also um, have more reviewers and people can gain exposure. Authors who haven't um, had that platform are able to get more people reading their stuff by having people review the books. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I am ga gathering that also worked for a lot of you guys too. A lot of arcs coming your way or e-galleys or, or stuff. Um, who, uh, Lauren Dati, what about you? How do you go about this process? Yeah, so I think that each publishing house sort of has its own um, relationship with influencers and their outreach programs. It does differ. Um, I think my personal, the thing that means the most to me is receiving ARCs and receiving e-copies um, because I feel like I feel like I have a very personal relationship almost with any book that I've read an advanced copy of. Um, I feel almost like honored to be included as like someone that they've chosen to share this with uh, before they share it, you know, publicly. Um, I think that's my favorite part of working with publishers. Okay. And uh, Kimberly, uh, not Kimberly, sorry, Danielle. Uh, yeah, I collaborate with publishers. Yeah, mostly getting arcs advanced reader copies or e-galleys um i think that it's a nice mix of like publishers i've reached out to versus people who've reached out to me um which is pretty exciting um other than that i think oh i lost my train of thought sorry sorry i think it's because of the the cat that uh, yeah i'm so sorry <laughs> he's gonna make an appearance or two <laughs> Well, that's okay. You can uh, come back. Sorry. I, I also wanted to know, I mean, we can go to Lou perhaps, and then just, uh, I wanted to ask, you know, also, how do you wish, uh, the second part of this question is, how do you wish um, publishers, no, what do you wish publishers knew before they started working with you? Was it like, do you have a sort of an ideal relationship in your mind that perhaps is not happening right now or is happening that you like? Um, I'd love, I'd love each one of you to sort of talk about that and Maybe we can start off with uh, with Lou and then come back. So Robin. for me, I um, I much like Azanta, I reach out to authors, as they're not authors, um, publishers, and sometimes it's successful and sometimes it's not. But um, I I have a special relationship with a lot of indie authors, and just because they're indie doesn't mean that they don't publish um, in other means. I think people kind of think that self publishing is the same as indie publishing, which it's not. Um, so I have a lot of relationships with authors who send me arcs, who, you know, trust me enough to beta read. And I think that for me, what I specifically appreciate is when publishers really know the content creators they're reaching out to. Because when I first started doing book talk, it was just like an abundance of arcs of books that I will never read, right? Like genres that I'm not interested in, um, topics that I uh, particularly would not seek out. And so um, 
it was it was a little too aggressive for my taste and for some publishers and how they marketed um, their books. But as my following grew, I started to develop a brand and or a sort of a specific genre of books that I read. So now the majority of publishers that reach out to me know that I read romance, dark romance or young adult romance, but for the most part, romance. And so that's what um, those are the, the type of emails that end up in my uh, inbox in terms of collaborations. Yeah. Okay. That sound that's that's actually nice to have a, a bit of that niche and then you really read what you like to read rather than being forced to review or book talk, you know, something that you don't really and, and if I could just add one more thing. Um when you really like a book, you'll really passionately advocate for it and it's clear. Like you as book talkers amongst ourselves, we can tell when a book talker has their heart and soul in the book that they're recommending. And then on the flip side, we can also tell when the book is just, it was okay for whatever intention they be recommending it. But you can, we, we know, we know when a book is like life-changing and when a book was okay. So um, I think that just for publishers to seek out the ideal reader and that's how you push a book out and that's how it will be successful. Okay, the authenticity of it all, I guess, it really, really makes a difference. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it, just in the influencer world, I mean, you see a lot of the, you know, celebrities and stuff promoting stuff, and you, you know, they're not using half of the stuff that uh, they're getting. Um, who wants to jump in next? Maybe uh, Azanta, do you want to jump in and, and your thoughts about working with publishers and what you'd like to see from them? I mean, sure. I mean, I echoing what Lou said, um, I, I have this like, video um that i like to say like this book had a plot this had pages had words and a title um you know those are the kinds of books that i i don't want like lou said coming into my inbox like i i think it's really important that publishers do their research whether um if it's a book they're sharing for a certain identity then you should be reaching out to book talkers of those identity um if you're doing something just like a massive publicity campaign where you're just sending out books like you should be sending out to readers you think would genuinely like you've worked with in the past um you want to continue working with um it, it just feels a lot more special and um personalized when you're getting an email that says hi zanta we like your profile this video you did is what we want for this book, you know? Um, so that's, I, I think okay. those are the kind well, of- They can get very specific then in, in that manner. Like, you know, there's a certain kind of, cause that's gonna be a, a question I wanna ask you guys later on about mm -hmm. you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg, the creative process and stuff. But we'll get back to that a bit later once we sort of like uh, chit chat with the others about what they think. Um, what about uh, Arun, Arundhati? Yeah, I um, I definitely second pretty much everything that Lou and Asanto said. Um, I think for me, the biggest, well, at least a very big criterion on um, whether or not I'll accept an ARC, whether or not I want to work with a publisher, is whether or not it feels like they are reaching out to me. Um, I don't like feeling like a mass email. I don't really enjoy feeling like I'm something on someone's checklist. Like, we're just going to reach out to these people and try and get them to promote my stuff. Um, I'm a person, I like to read, I want to promote things that I enjoy and that I think that my audience can connect with in an authentic way. That's really good. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, what about uh, Danielle, do you want to go back again? And then sure. we'll, come, we'll come to Kimberly. Um, something I wish that publishers knew when reaching out to book talkers is a few things first of all to echo like make sure that you're sending the books to the people who can comment on the contents of it appropriately that's a huge thing um as a queer person when i get queer books i feel like more often than not i can comment to some degree of it but there's some books that as different identities should be sent to different reviewers to make sure that people are speaking about the contents in a way that is authentic and true to the identities being talked about in that book. That for me is a big thing. Um, also, something I wish publishers knew about how to collaborate with book talkers. Up until recently, a lot of influencer forums didn't include book talk as a like as a forum. So just making sure that it's on your 
uh, ARC requests or on people joining your influencer packages, make sure there's a, a spot point. for Book Talk because it's so new. Yeah. <laughs> we know it's new, but it's uh, a little powerful little guy for sure in the publishing industry right now. Yeah. Um, other than that, like I think speaking as a Canadian, I think the book community is so tight knit and like. Uh, the community is so important to Canadians, I think in general, that I find that like creating personal relationships with the people working at these publishing companies are so important. Um, like I can name everybody I work with by first name. I feel very comfortable with everybody who I work with. And I think that's really special. And I don't know if that's an international experience so much or if we're just very... Uh, very privileged to have that community uh, in Canada. But yeah, I think just getting to know book talkers and know what makes what makes them excited, because I agree, it, you can tell when people are not so excited to promote a book. It, it, it doesn't then do what it's supposed to do, right? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I mean, TikTok has been going on for a few years now, and it, I, I know it's one of the fastest uh, rising sort of platforms that, you know, publishers and also marketers in general are looking at this year. Like it's, it's, it's huge. So it's exploding at a rate that probably Instagram and, you know, t Twitter and any of the other ones uh, are not able to do in, in terms of marketing. So um, there's a big scope, I think, for, for publishers to really sort of like hone in on what they want to market and how they're going to do it and also have that relationship about you know what they which you know like I'm sure each one of you has uh, Lou talked about brand and stuff and each one of you has their own unique brand um, whether it's you know through the genre but also your personalities and what you like to promote and stuff and how you promote it so um, having that also aligned with specific publishers or uh, specific types of books or audiences I think it's I think publishers have to do a lot more um, work in trying to figure out who it is uh, that is, you know, rather than, as you said, that mass email of sending stuff out to everybody and saying who can promote my book, but being very specific, because I think that one specific person can really sort of blow their marketing out of the, uh, you know, the, the game. And, um, yeah. Um, uh, Kimberly, we haven't heard from you, so uh, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are. I think everyone made really amazing points and I just like to follow up and add that book talk is a very powerful marketing tool that publishers should utilize more. Um, there are a few examples of books that have blown up because of book talk. So a few examples that come to mind immediately would be The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Um, that book was very popular on book talk and you could see um, the power that book talk had because it was showing up in so many stores. Um, there were so many different editions of the book that have come out. Another one that I personally promoted on my page was The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. Um, a little bit of background, she was a self-published author and now she is traditionally publishing her book and it has amassed a super large following. And I think publishers should know and should realize that book talk, even though it is very novel in its early stages, um, it is super powerful when it comes to marketing books. And sometimes it doesn't have to be marketing to a very large crowd. Sometimes just finding the right book talker and the right niche and marketing to them could have so much power when it comes to getting the book out there. Yeah, I, to I totally agree with you. It's it, it is that about that niche publishing, and the I also that actually believe you. Yes, yeah, please go. I ahead. want to add one more point, sort of to piggyback over Kimberly's yeah. point. Um, when it comes to romance books in bookstores in Canada, we have Indigo. In the U.S., is Barnes and Noble. Because of book talk, more and more dark romance or romance that typically you don't find at bookstores are making a presence. Oh, wow. Okay. But yeah. Books that you don't are typically just online. You buy them from either Amazon, from the author's website are now showing up. Like for example, Ice Planet Barbarian, that book blew up on TikTok. I know it's, it's, it's kind of a really interesting story, but that book wasn't being published. And then it blew up on TikTok and it got a new cover and the author was all of a sudden her whole life changed. And now her book, which was, it had a very small cult following of like alien romance 
you know, folks who followed that genre, which, you know, no judgment, we don't judge here. Um, all of a sudden, there are beautiful books and new covers, you know, at Barnes and Noble. And I'm not sure if it exists in Indigo, but I know that it is being sold in Barnes and Noble. And that's just, that's the power of TikTok. It's not just a bunch of kids recording themselves, you know, reading books. It's a really powerful tool. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, really quite a story. And it's true because now also with all the data uh, that uh, marketers have, like it's, it's, it, they, they're able to track this stuff, right? And, and, and even give you that information that, oh, this little store in, you know, middle of nowhere sold that many dark romance novels. And it's, and sometimes it's, it's very surprising to people because it's very hard from a publisher level or a new to sort of sit and go, you know, that store is going to sell like X many copies because a lot of times they are wrong. I, sometimes they're correct, but you know, a lot of time, but with data also, that also helps. And, and TikTok is definitely sort of, it's, it's that viral component, right? Like people love to see videos and um, just go around all the time and, uh, yeah, the power of it is, is very, very incredible. Um, I wanted to uh, take you back perhaps to uh, that project you worked on that you're most passionate about. And I have sort of have two parts to this. So maybe when I, when, when you each of you had turns, you tell me about that project and that project could also be perhaps the project, maybe it's the video that actually changed it all for you. I'd love to know those two things. So what's the video that really sort of turned things for each one of you to you know like you're just doing this and then suddenly it's like oh man people are really paying attention to this um and and perhaps that's not the video but it's also what's the other video that you're most passionate about that you absolutely is your you know star video that you want people to know about um sorry start off with oh lou why don't we start off with lou um, I don't remember, but I think the first video that of mine that went viral had nothing to do with book talk. It was just a, you know, <laughs> it was just about how everyone was feeling, and it was a very, um, it's it's sort of, it is part of my brand in the sense that I have a little mini mic that I use when I record. It's very cute, and it is from Indigo. So shout out to Indigo. Um, <laughs> And I, my, a lot of my style of videos are just like, um, I give my opinion on things and give my opinions on books. And this particular video was about how all of a sudden it seemed like none of us had friends during the pandemic and how a lot of our friendships were based on seeing each other and that component was lost and how our lives were suddenly shifting from in real life to virtual friendships. Um, and that's the sort of, I guess it did foreshadow my experience with book talk if I may talk about my passion project I have mainly two um in which Azanta is uh part of one of them she is um our CEO she's the founder of book talk and I am a VP of development and that's how Azanta and I connected and that's how she found my video so I'm so glad I made that video because one thing led to another and now we're best friends so that's my sort of <laughs> that's my big passion project but my other passion project is also my podcast. Um, I, I, I'm in love with it. It's, it's just my little passion project. I don't know if it's going anywhere, but I love all the people that I've interviewed so far. Um, but those are the two things. Yeah. Weirdly enough, my first video to go viral was not book talk related. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, you, Arundhati? Um, I think for me, the video that sort of changed a lot was not necessarily my first most viral video, but it was a video that I made. Um, it was sort of a feminist critique of some young adult and new adult um, romance tropes, specifically in fantasy. Um, it was a bit of a controversial opinion. I wasn't sure how it would do. Um, I wasn't sure, you know, if it would ruffle feathers, but I tried my best to sort of present it in a way that I felt was appropriate. and. Um, it got a surprisingly good response. Um, it got more views than I was expecting and a more positive response than I was expecting. A lot of people sort of were in my comments thanking me for like saying this because they were like, I hadn't thought of it this way before. You really sort of, um, you really sort of opened my eyes to what this might mean. And I think for me, that was very much, um, I think it was meaningful because I realized that my opinions are valuable and I can share what I actually think on this platform and expect a good response. 
That's quite empowering. That's great. Uh, what about uh, you, who has that? Kimberly, please. Yeah, so similar to um, the others, my most viral video wasn't actually directly related to the book talk. Um, but the video that kind of changed the way I wanted to create my content was a recent one where I kind of didn't post about uh, recommendations like I typically do. It was more surrounding the kind of content that we were consuming because book talk, um, it does have its advantages, but one thing that many people complain about is repetitiveness and like how you only have a couple of seconds to recommend books and you don't really go into depth which is true and it does have its flaws and its pros but at the same time one thing that I realized is that I wanted to take um, a more critical approach to the books that I was promoting personally because I found that a lot of books um, that were being viral and that were getting a lot of attention didn't necessarily have things that I agreed with so one of which was I wanted to be very critical of the media and what kind of representation it was promoting. So one thing that I wanted to make sure is that the books that I read um, were very socially conscious and promoted a very good representation rather than having um, a very popular book, which isn't so good at having representation. So that was kind of um, a moment, a video that kind of changed my traje trajectory in terms of what videos I wanted to post. And um, I don't have any uh, fully completed projects in terms of um, book talk, but one thing that I was very interested in and I'm currently looking into is I have a lot of books. I have too many books and sometimes I read them and I forget about them. So I wanted to kind of create a program or work with someone to create a program where we can actually donate these very popular books and to give them to people who might love them. Because what I find is people see the libraries, the books are very outdated. Um, a lot of people seek these very popular new books and I have too many of them and I, they just take up space on my shelf and I no longer like, I no longer want them. So I wanna kind of find a way to recycle them and make them better. So that's one of a passion projects that I'm hoping will be in progress soon. Okay, wow. That's great. What about uh, Danielle? I think we haven't got to you with this question. Yeah, um, I think like it's so hard to predict what's going to go viral on Book Talk. It's always your like the videos that took you two seconds to film, and uh, you're like probably not wearing makeup and maybe in your pajamas. Like who knows? They're always like the the craziest ones go viral. Uh, but the one for me that changed. Uh, my trajectory was I made like a really quick video just being like, hey, if you want to find book talk creators, this is how you do it. Like just search people's names with book at the end and you're probably going to find somebody on book talk at this point. Like just kind of creating videos that welcomed people to the community um, was important to me because I think that's what a lot of us needed at the time that book talk was getting big we just needed that online community just to chat with people um and then i've had like really silly ones go viral where like i would stitch which is a feature on tiktok where you can take like five seconds of someone else's video uh thirst traps and just give like book recommendations uh which is fun that's fun uh that's like the funny and easy <laughs> side of book talk but uh, the project that I'm most proud of is my podcast. Um, we just celebrated one year in January, which is really oh, exciting. Goodness. Thank you. Um, we have had some really big authors on the podcast, some really big content creators. We had Victoria Aviard, Nisha Sharma. Uh, we just had Talia Hibbert on the podcast. So we are, uh, we're making waves, I think. I'm really proud of it. And also, it's a nice compliment to the book talk format of being able to speak in longer forms. Kind of what uh, Kimberly was saying, sometimes it's hard when it's so small to get across specifically the things that you want to say. Uh, so nice. It's nice to have a longer form to compliment uh, the mm -hmm. short form, like really easy scroll stuff. So yeah, that's what I'm most proud of. And you guys are so busy. Uh, like, I, I can't imagine how you fit all this in, because I know some of you are still studying and, and all this stuff and how you fit in reading and then actually like finding 
you know, uh, creating a video and then filming it and then editing it and all that stuff. I mean, um, one of the things I wanted to ask is, so this coming back to that question earlier on is, you know, what came first, the chicken or the eggs? And uh, also about, I, I think that like Lou, for example, I think you talked about what types of books you like, but I'd love to hear from some of the others also, if there's specific genres that you guys love and, and focus on. Um, and then also, yeah, what do you, do you go for the book first and then do something around that? Or is it the other, you have this idea and you really wanna try and make a, um, something fit, you know, the book fit around that idea or maybe a bit of both. So uh, I don't know, Arundhati, do you wanna start off perhaps or? Yeah, sure. Um, I, know. So I know that, I'm a fantasy girl at heart. Um, my favorite books are always going to be fantasy um, or sci-fi. Um, not to say that I don't love and respect uh, romance and contemporary, but the books that I will probably instinctively want to promote are uh, fantasy. And um, for me, in terms of what came first, it will always be the book because I'm, I'm a book lover at heart rather than a content creator. I've been reading books for far longer than I've been making videos. And that's what's the most important to me. I'll read a book, decide if I like it, and then figure out how I'm going to talk about it online. Okay, that's good to hear for all the book lovers. Uh, what about uh, Azenta? What do you I'm right there with Arundhati, where the book always comes first for me. I need to feel inspired by the book if I'm going to create good content, or else my my content is going to come out really dry. It's going to be like, I love this book. You should read it. Um, you can always tell, like Lou was saying earlier, like all of you guys have said all already, there's you like readers recognize a love for reading in each other. Um, and like, sometimes I read a book, like I just finished This Woven Kingdom, uh, or not just, but I finished it like a month ago, um, This Woven Kingdom by Tahada Mafi. And after it, I was like inspired to like stitch a whole shawl and everything and make a video about it. And then like do like a whole aesthetic. I turned the fire on, like it was this whole thing. Like, it's always going to be the book that comes first that just like inspires me um, and like just makes those projects come to life. And, and like we were saying earlier, it's not always those like, videos that you're really proud of that are the ones that go viral but it's the ones that like other people and your followers who will see the video no matter how low the views are on the video will connect with um and i i've gotten a lot of people to read that book just because you know i was just like feeling very passionate a little bit passionately about it so and i could see a lot of uh, the other tiktokers like they're you know everyone went, oh ah, as soon as you mentioned you know the books and stuff the book <laughs> book, uh, so it was just it's good to see that that sort of like connection and you're all very well read and well, well aware of, you know, other things, uh, not necessarily even in your own genres and you're pretty on top of everything. Um, anyone else like uh, Kimberly, like or any or Danielle, if you have uh, things you want to share that are different from. Yeah, so I agree. The book always comes before the creative execution, because I find it's really hard to make a video about a book that you've never read. It's almost as if you're writing a book report on something that you've never read. So when I make my content, I always like to read the book and also just to be aware of what I'm promoting and to tell what I'm talking about. So it's really helpful to read the book before I make the video. Yes, I agree. I think the book has to come first because you have to match the tone of the book to the tone of the video. And sometimes we see a distance of like, ooh, the content of the book does not match the way in which you're presenting this book. And that can sometimes mislead people. So I think I always personally, it has to start with the book. Okay. That is wonderful. Um, I wanted to learn about um, just TikTok. Uh, and uh, how do you guys make how do you make money on TikTok? And um, how do you also choose like, you know, criteria for sponsored content? I've noticed on some of your videos, like it's not just books, it's, you know, maybe you're doing tea and you're combining the two. And, um, and I don't know if that's, uh, you know, intentional and there's actually sponsored um, stuff happening there, but I'd love to know, yeah, just in general, like how, how does one about make, go about making money or choosing the criteria? Um, Anyone jump in first? Uh, I can jump in really quick. Um, in Canada, we don't have the creator funds. So in the US, 
if you hit some of TikTok certain criteria, you can get paid per view for your videos. Canada, we do not have that. So more often than not, when you see Canadians creating content, they are doing it out of the love of their heart. <laughs> they are doing it uh, just because they love to read and they love to promote. Uh, sometimes just the exchange of an arc or finished copy of a book, that is the transaction. Uh, but more often than not, we don't see a lot of paid opportunities in Canada as of now. Hopefully that changes in the future. Um, but I think, yeah, I think that's really important to acknowledge is that we're uh, people are not always getting paid for this stuff. They're just doing yeah, it. That's a lot it. of work. I mean, it's, uh, you, yeah, please go. I just want to sort of follow up to what Danielle said. Yeah, Canadians, unfortunately, I don't know what, what the technicality is because there are huge, um, you know, TikTokers that are Canadian based in Canada. And I've realized this, um, you know, if we're going to speak honestly, when I was a much smaller content creator, um, publishers wouldn't even look at me right? Because I was based in Canada. And so there was that, I don't know if it was in terms of how they distributed or like how, how money was distributed from a publisher based in the U.S. to a Canadian. Um, it just seemed like a technicality that a lot of publishers weren't, oh, ha weren't willing to overcome. Mm -hmm. But now that I have, you know, a, a much bigger following, I feels like the exception was suddenly made for me. Um, and mind you, like this doesn't happen often, but when it does, um, it's, it's unfortunate that they had to wait until now to reach out to me because I, you know, my, my, my page or my, you know, my content has sort of expanded, but yeah, if you see a Canadian book talker, it's like, like they really, they really love these books and they're doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. So. <laughs> Most publishers like go far and wide and look for these guys because they're really going to help promote, yeah. right? Um, anyone else want to jump in uh, with that particular, how to make money on TikTok or, or it was a sort of the same for you guys can believe? Um, yeah, so for the most part, like what Danielle said, we do not have a creator fund in Canada, which is really unfortunate because there are very big book talkers, but one of the ways that I'm aware of that you can make money off of BookTok is actually by creating an Amazon affiliate account. So if you do have an Amazon storefront, you can actually create links. Um, and if someone purchases using that link, they can earn a small commission. So that's one of the ways that I'm aware of. But um, in terms of directly making money off of TikTok, since we don't have a creative fund, it's virtually impossible to. Um, Arundhati, anything to add to that or? Um, yeah, so I'm not based in Canada, um, but I still actually don't have the Creator Fund just because it's a very complicated process getting set up on the Creator Fund. Um, you don't earn a lot per view um, and it often, I've heard a lot of reports of it sort of messing with your algorithm. It's sort of, um, it's tough to sort of, um, promote your content on the creator fund. Um, so I haven't actually gotten involved with that. I think most people don't earn a great deal on TikTok. It's, I think it is a passion project for the majority of book talkers, uh, regardless of uh, location. Um, I think that, yeah, I think I mostly do it just for the community, for the friends to meet people. Yeah. Okay. That's great. I hope all the stuff changes, um, you know, with more sort of exposure and uh, just keep doing what you guys are doing and, uh, you know, hope, you know, share each other's stuff and promote each other. And I think it will hopefully uh, change. Um, I'm just thinking maybe we jump to a question. Um, I'm looking at the time, perhaps a QA question. We can always come back and chat if we want to. Um, so there's a question uh, that says we are from from Sarah Ree, from Sarah Reeves. Um, we are a nonfiction publisher. Do you feel that book talk is a good opportunity for nonfiction as well? Um, there's lots of interest. I think there was a book talk, um, book net session last, last time where they talked about the different genres and there's certain genres that do very well or have done uh, very well in the past on book net. So I guess maybe this question is, uh, because of that, but uh, anyone want to jump jump in and um, speak to that? I uh, sorry, 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 go ahead. 
don't know. You go ahead, Lou. Okay. <laughs> Lou and um, then, um, so, like I said before, I do study art history, and I have been sent a couple of um, encyclopedic books with uh, general information, whether it's um, mythology or art history. Um, and I have a like an entire shelf on my bookshelf that's just like catalog museum, you know, books and stuff like that, um, that are, and like university textbooks that I've, that are, that are published essentially as, you know, you can buy them, but, um, I, I, again, it depends on the person's niche. Like I would gladly recommend an art history book because that's my major and I love it. Um, and so okay. maybe like, yeah, so. So, you know, yeah, go ahead. I think there's a, a creator and book talk for every genre or niche. And I think it's just about finding the right person and pairing the book with them. Like, um, I have a friend who does just horror recommendations and he gives some of the best horror recommendations. It's not my preferred genre, but his videos go viral constantly because he's able to have built a community around himself that also loves horror. So there's absolutely a space on book talk for nonfiction. I have, and follow people who do recommend nonfiction. I read nonfiction, it's not my preferred genre, but I do love it. Um, I think it's just a, taking some time on the app, feeling out and finding the right people in that specific genre to, to send those books. Yeah, I, I agree. I completely agree with Danielle, what Danielle said. Um, I have worked for a publisher in the past. I worked for a publisher last year. Um, one of the big five publishing companies in um, the US and I've sat in on meetings before where they've discussed social media and I think something that publishing companies do need to do is exactly what Danielle just said is take the time to learn about the app learn about the people who are on the app um, there is a big like generational difference between Gen X Millennials and Gen Z um, but honestly paying someone to like sit and scroll all day is I think is actually worth it because TikTok is such an influential sales platform for so many different types of companies including publishing um there are different sides to book talk there's um you know the fantasy side there's YA there's ro romance there's smut talk you know everybody knows about smut talk and there's going to be non-fiction um TikTok too but you can't just like reach out to the biggest um, book talkers because that's not what their niche is that's not what their audience is there for um, so yeah just snapped to what Danielle said that's great advice uh, anyone else wants to jump in Kimberly or Arundhati yep please Arundhati uh, sure just a um, very quick point um, agreed with everything you guys said and I also want to say that even if you don't necessarily see for example, nonfiction book talkers or any space existing currently on the app, that doesn't mean that there's not an audience for it. Um, I think the, the beauty of book talk is that you can, you don't just have to repeat what other people have done before you. There's always gonna be people who wanna do new things and who wanna learn new things and you shouldn't let that stop you. That's great. Um, let me take another question uh, from the audience. Um, this is by Lindsay Yates. Uh, and this is interesting because uh, it's about, she asked ask about how can a small indie press uh, best utilize TikTok? Um, it's tough to compete with books that have heavily paid advertising. I guess in Canada, that doesn't really uh, matter anyway, but yeah, the big name authors, for example, but how can small indie uh, press is best utilized. I mean, it seems, I mean, anyone can jump in on this, but uh, it seems that you guys have a love for certain genre and books and it wouldn't really matter to you guys, whether it was a big author or small indie, but uh, please feel if there's anything you guys want to add. And I'll speak to this because I like, I mean, at some one given point, I exclusively worked with indie authors. Like I just emailed the authors and that's how the collaboration comes about. And so um, similar to what Danielle was saying, if you find that niche, if you find that person's, what they love to recommend, they will recommend the heck out of that book. Every single, they will find trends, they will find sounds, they will sit there and make notes. It's, it really is about customizing or matching the book or customizing the book to the creator. Um, and like I was saying earlier, 
that passion and that genuine love for the book is just going to be, you know, picked up on. So I think it's just like Azanta was saying, maybe taking the time to actually be on book talk and find authors that, so not authors, but content creators that like that niche. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of times we just, we love being a part of this community and we love connecting with authors and publishers. So finding someone that will passionately advocate for your book is sometimes all you really need. It doesn't have to be a big campaign or collaboration. Um, and some book talkers are, you know, they do it for free. I mean, a lot of Canadians, we do it for free because we love it. But a lot of times, like that's when we're, when we're passionate a book, about a book, we will just recommend it, recommend it, recommend it. Okay. I think, um, too, there's indie authors who have completely utilized the platform to sell their books. Like uh, Melissa's Bookshelf, she uh, wrote a book anonymously, published it, and then sent it to book talkers and had a big code and mystery to figure out who the author was, and it blew up on Book Talk. And that was solely through the power of Book Talk. She's an indie author, uh, I believe. And I'm like 95% sure, but I'm, I'll give me that 5% in case I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's just the power of Book Talk. I don't think it matters, small presses or indie anything, because we've seen indie authors blow up because a, a good book is a good book regardless of where it's coming from i agree and i've seen this question a ton in like the chat is how do you contact book talkers like i think if you just go to someone's profile they'll have their email in their bio most people prefer to be contacted by email but i'm not going to speak for like everyone um some people will accept dms um but um tiktok dms are really finicky and they just like kind of suck um across the board so like TikTok DMs are usually a no-go. Um, just like for my advice is like email them. If you can't find an email, if they have an Instagram attached to, in their bio, usually Instagram DMs are like a much better way to go as well. So um, if you're an indie publisher, just send a personalized email. Like sometimes those go way further than like Penguin Random House sending out massive mass emails to wrong the wrong people. You know, it just, it doesn't make sense. And if all else fails, you can always just leave a comment on a video that you like, be like, hey, we're so-and-so and we're trying to connect. Um, can you provide us with your email or, you, you know? Yeah, we spend a lot of time on this app. So we see all the comments. <laughs> so leave a comment. And sales reps would also be a great uh, resource. I think everyone who's a sales rep uh, should uh, connect with you guys. And, uh, and uh, there's a comment too, that you're a breath of fresh air to the book industry the platform has given an industry a great surge. So great stuff, guys. Um, let's uh, go to another question. Uh, we Maybe we have time for one or two more or something. Uh, what is uh, What resources can publishers provide to help support book talkers? For example, providing content warnings. This, uh, I'll jump in right away. Uh, yep. First of all, hey, Bridge, how's it going? Uh, second of all, um, I think content warnings in books, I feel incredibly passionate about this. I think they need to happen. Uh, I think that is the next big step forward. Of, it's all about informed consent, right? We have different guidelines in different medias for movies, for video games. I think um, it, that it's that two-way street of like, readers should know what they're getting into. If they don't wanna see it, they can flip past the page. I think content warnings are incredibly important for books. And as a community, I think we are all really advocating for content warnings to be put into books. Okay. Uh, anyone else wanna jump in or Lou? Um, yeah, so specifically for books that are that have a niche, if there is a Muslim character, if there is, um, you know, a, a queer character to target those content creators, because it's, it's offensive, and it's quite disingenuous when there's this mass email email that goes out to anyone, and uh, people in that category or in that minority don't get that book. It feels like a slap in the face when someone who is not in that community has the power to talk about a book and talk about an experience that they don't have. So my advice to um, publishers in the or, you know, 
say big or small to take like do your due diligence in again matching the book with the content creator because i will happily glad to, happily gladly talk about a book that has muslim characters um but i feel like if i saw someone else who was non-muslim getting an arc of a book about a story that i most likely will relate to feels disingenuous and like offensive if, I, if i'm you know forgive me for being so you know crass but it just it is offensive when i see someone else who has no idea what my experience is reflect on that experience mm -hmm. so yeah that makes sense makes sense um i wanted to jump in for another quick question there's lots of great questions coming in um everybody wants to know what that you guys do so after this you're going to be even more busy so make time uh for doing lots more videos. Um, Book Talk was credited with bringing some backlists to the attention of new and younger audiences. Um, how did you discover those older books? Were the publishers involved in those discoveries? No, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of no's. Okay, so these guys are just uh, on top of everything. <laughs> it's just really authentic when those older books blow up. It just, yeah. it, it seems almost like a kismet moment of like, and sometimes book talk gets like heat from other bookish platforms about like why are they blowing up books from 10 years ago it's because they're good and a lot of book talk yeah. people i found are coming back to reading after a hiatus of reading so we've got to catch up we've got to catch up on these really great books that have been published while we were away from our reading love um but no a lot of them i, I would say more often than not the books that blow up are not like part of a campaign it's very authentic that's the biggest thing about TikTok. it's authenticity uh which makes it hard to publish or to promote certain things if you're like we want it to go viral it's like well we do too but we're just gonna have to wait and see what the TikTok algorithm says about that <laughs> yeah okay that makes sense um Kim kimberly has something to say uh, please go yeah um, so one instance that I remember is there was this very popular book made from like the 1990s. I think it's called King's Jobble, which is a mystery book that went super viral, not even on book talk, but on regular TikTok. And there's so many people um, rushing to go to the bookstore to get it. And this book hadn't been in publication for a while, but it's showing up in the book talk section, for example, in chapters. I saw it in my book talk table at chapters. So that was really interesting to see how books from the 90s books that aren't even known can actually become very popular just from TikTok solely so i think there isn't an exact formula there the algorithm is very finicky and there's no way to kind of know um which videos will go viral but when it does it's really rewarding and as danielle mentioned it's very authentic and it's kind of hard to manipulate the authenticity of that yeah, I, I think that's what I'm gathering. Any last words uh, before we we end? I mean, what I'm getting from this is that there's two. There's one thing that I've learned uh, booked for book talkers, be authentic, be authentic, be authentic. And for publishers, find authentic book talkers. Um, yeah, that that's sort of my take on it. What, what do you, you guys agree or? Authenticity is the is key to everything. And then the money will flow eventually and hopefully all that stuff will change in the future and the more we do we talk about this stuff but um it's really been fantastic having all you guys uh, here thank you daniela thank you kimberly thank you arundati thank you lou um azanta um it has been such a pleasure chatting with you guys and i wish you all the best in talking and i'll be paying attention thank you so much for having us Thank, Thank you for having me. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much.